Hello, I'm Richard Vose, the Bald Explorer, and I'm joined by the lovely Julia. Hello, lovely Julia. Hello, lovely Richard. We're out on another inv- exciting investigation, aren't we, lovely Julia? We are lovely Richard. We've been transported into Hampshire today. Yes. Um, and it just so happens that behind us we have this rather impressive gatehouse from Place House. Yes. It wasn't always a gatehouse, though, was it? No, it was an abbey originally. It was the... Titchfield. Titchfield Abbey. Titchfield Abbey. So we are in Titchfield, which is near Fareham. Yes, in the outskirts of Fareham. Close to Southampton. My hometown. Your hometown. Yes. And this is a place that you've been wanting to take me for some for time. A long time. And today we've managed to fit it in a very busy schedule, which is Yay! great. So look at this enormous place behind us. What an impressive building. We're going to go and have a... You can go in. It's free. That's the other great thing. It's a Whee! national... Not National Trust. English, English Tr- Heritage. English Heritage. Yes. So, shall we have a wander in and have a look? Yes. So this is very grand. Actually, what you see now, I know, is where the nave of the original church, um, back in, I think, the 12th century, when it was built, the original nave of the, the Abbey Church, mm. um, that was later, after the dissolution of the monasteries, turned into this rather grand... Um, this is manor the house. manor house, yeah. And this is house, it was then called. And this is the gatehouse that we're going to go into. I'll let you go in first and get a, a scale of the place. I had to duck then, but I didn't. Beautiful lattice work on the back of the door. Oh yeah, look at that. That is incredible. So, I'm just trying to get, a ga- I've not been in here at all, so just trying to get a gauge of what there is to see. Um, I'm going to come through here, because the gatehouse is all that's left, and the rest of the house, which would have been out here, was I think broken down in the 18th century, I read, yeah. um, for the stonework. Mm. And when you read these sort of things, you just think, well, that's just outrageous. It is, isn't it? But, um, but then they weren't quite so worried about heritage back then, I suppose. Plus it was all part of the dissolution, wasn't it? Yeah, you had the dissolution in uh, 1535, 1536, was, something like that, and then the abbey disappeared. Yeah, it was tend to ruin then. And then, then that was when it was adapted into the house, and then the house, which is, as you can see, is still behind us, was later in the 18th century, this bit that we're standing in, by Lord part of the building. Wisely, I believe. Yeah, if was. If I recall correctly. Yeah, and the ha- so that's when the house was then again. That's why this bit's missing, because that was the stonework that was taken. Ah. So it's a bit of a complicated story. A because convoluted. you convoluted. Co- <laughs> convoluted. But I think the square, this bit, is. There was never anything here. Mm. But around the side, you can see these, um, well, I don't know, they must be fireplaces for different rooms. And there's probably interpretation boards all over. This is going to be just a bit of a whistle stop look at this place. But as you can see here, these are fireplaces up in front of us here. And And there's a number of them along here. So these must have been individual rooms. Yeah, it looks like it. it. Used to capture my imagination as a child. I was going to say this is a bit of a special place for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was very close to my um, family home. Um, so w- when I moved home from Saudi Arabia, um, then my, from a desert to this, you know. Yes. It's it does capture the child's imagination. Yes, because this is you know real heritage. Absolutely. I'm going to go into one of the rooms here that are existent. Um, they've fenced off little areas where they put sand in. I, don't, I suppose that's. I think they're protecting tiles. Under oh, are they protecting tiles? Oh, right. Can't see anything under there. But let's just nip through here. See what we see. It is amazing. We have this all to ourselves at the moment. And this would have been a grand. Would have been a grand hall. I should. I should imagine. And there's a large fireplace there, and another one on the second floor. Well, rather the first floor. I don't really know too much about this, but the way these sort of things work is usually the gr- the very ground floor is where storage is done, and then the second f- or the first floor is the the bigger bigger room where you would entertain yeah, and, the, and what the more have leisurely you. areas. Up but there. that said, as you as you so rightly said, there is a massive fireplace here, an ingle nook almost. I wonder if this is where they used to do the cooking. So yeah, maybe. The um, kitchen was down here, yeah. and 
um, above, and you can always tell from above because the windows usually are bigger to let in more light. Yeah. Um, and actually, if you look up there, you can see that there is a roof line, a triangular roof line. And then there's a bit that they've blocked up, I think, probably for safety. Mm. And then you've got the rest of this large area with a second fireplace on the far end. Yeah. There would have, there would have originally been four tower turrets here. Because you've got these uh, two windy stairway, staircases up there. But you can't go up that one anyway. I think we can go through part of that one. Let's go through that one. Yeah. Have a look, see. Okay, that's coming up. We've continued up there. That is uh, far too much of a wreck. Right up to the tower. Yeah, so I'm guessing that goes down into like a basement and kitchen area. I mean, I have no idea, of course. Mm. Um, one day we'll come back and we'll do a proper feature on the place. Yeah. It would be nice to, if possible, to bring the drone and fly that oh, over. Oh, that would be amazing. We might have to ask permission there. Yeah. I know. There's people. several other bits of Titchfield that I'd like to show off to the uh, viewers at some point as well. Let's go back round the, the very impressive front. You've got these um, loopholes here. You see the lovely windows, mullion windows. They're the the, the sort of stone framing that's what makes the mullion windows and then these these fake arrow holes these are really just for effect um, by the time that this was built real uh, danger of that sort was not really going to be a thing apart from of course if any of this was involved in the English Civil War which was uh, much later up above right up there you've got these great faces just looking out. I don't know if they're gargoyles or just grotesques. I think they're just grotesques. Yeah. Can't see any spouts. We'll go around this side. It's a it's an very impressive building, Julia. I love it. <laughs> and, and the fact is, it is open and anybody can come in and you just read the interpretation boards. That's what I quite like. Mm. And right on the far end is a little bench. You can have a picnic. Yeah. It's walled off completely. And here you see the rest of it but the rest of the building actually looking at the pictures or the drawings that have interpreted it the actual building goes much further back but not only that we're tracing on the ground here old where, wall lines yes where the abbey was i mean we've been just describing the what's left the, of the manor house essentially yes, but much earlier than that going back to the the 12th and 13th century was the original abbey that was here with the white cannons and the premonstration, yeah. premonstration, I think. I can't, I can't say it unless I can see it. <laughs> yes, me too. Uh, they, they would they, have been here originally. Yeah. And yeah. I think you were saying that they were the ones that go, went a yes. bit like the friars. They were, they were, they were, yeah, they were monks, but they, they then went out they lived, to the community. Yeah, they lived communal, uh, as a, in a communal way, but they did go out into the community as priests into the right. local churches and yeah. things. So, um, I remember when I was up in Cumbria with uh, Robert Croser, we had um, another of the premonstratensian monks, abbeys, and I can't remember where that was shot. Was it shot? Shot Abbey. I may have got that wrong. But a beautiful setting, and we've just happened to come on a really lucky day in January to have this all to ourselves. Mm. There's now a house on part of the uh, old ruin, you know, ruinous um, underground parts. Sub Vault of Daughter. I ought to know what that means, but I'm afraid I don't. Hmm. I wonder if Daughter was a family name. Doesn't ring any bells. Not a bell ringer then. <laughs> Love these little bits that have been walled up. Some sort of archway here, possibly a window by the looks of things, because there's a, a lintel at the bottom of and then an arch over the top and then we come back in through which must be the east doorway mm. and then on the ground here a well so a source of water mm -hmm. for both well who knows probably for the abbey as well well who knows well who knows? <laughs> sorry had to do it gotta be done so 
an absolutely lovely, fantastic building with all those beautiful, I mean, it's in, you know, it's, I'm, I'm losing my words here. And the reason I'm losing my words is because what I'm trying to say is there's enough of it to get an impression of what it was like, but also there's enough of it to let your imagination fill the blanks. That's right, yeah. And I like that because if you go to a place that's completely there, there's nothing for the imagination. Mm -hmm. It is what it is and you can't imagine anything else. But when it's in a bit of a ruinous state you can walk around for example look just look at this doorway here let me just run over to this door look at this above the doorway beautiful beautiful uh, carving work there that's now exposed and slowly disappearing leaf work and it looks like corn or something yeah and i love that i love the fact that there's bits that you could just spend forever trying to work it out but to end this very short video on this rather remarkable place. We'll just go back into the gatehouse again because um, that's worth looking at. Just look at these amazing windows. This is on the inside of the courtyard coming out through those windows, through this vast door. Um, you know, the, the chap who owned this was um, one of the courtiers to the king and Henry VIII, of course, and what an amazing building he had for himself. Just, you can hear the pigeons, maybe. Some things never change. Roasting at the top. Well, Julia, thank you so much for taking me here. Thank you for obliging. This has been absolutely brilliant. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. We'll come back another time and... Yeah, I wish I'd known more about the place, really. Oh, step through the door to say goodbye thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed this and would like us to go to more of these sort of places do let us know leave a comment and um, we'll like and subscribe <laughs> yes like and subscribe become a patron help us put petrol in the car to get out and about that would be fantastic mm -hmm. but from Julia and I at uh, Place House in Titchfield in Titchfield take care thanks for watching and goodbye bye 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 Let's leave them with one big view of the house.